And we're back with you to take a look at our ag commodity trade on the mid-session. All right, here's a look at our national numbers on the crop condition summary that came out yesterday from USDA. And in case you missed it, here's another look. On the corn, we had a total uh, good to excellent rating of 67%. That was down one point from the previous week. Soybeans unchanged at 66%. Cotton down three points at 41%. Grain sorghum went down a point at 52%. On the I-80 corridor on the corn, the condition rating went down two points in Nebraska on the west end of that belt, uh, down to 81% good to excellent, still very good. Iowa up a point to 74%. Illinois went down a point to 75%. Indiana gained two at 72%. Ohio State unchanged at 79%. As far as the corn denting goes, uh, we had Nebraska at 72% this week. That's uh, ahead of its five-year average of 64 <clears throat> Uh, just like that, Iowa, 77% dented. Their average is 59. Illinois, 90%, 20 points ahead of normal. Uh, Indiana, 74% dented. That's 14% ahead of its average pace. And Ohio, 66%. Their average is 51. So let's take a look at what's going on in the markets with Scott Geekus. He is with Longleaf Trading in Chicago. He joins us right now. And we had kind of a softer start here to the markets today, Scott. What are the traders talking about? Yeah, everyone's waiting for the headline coming out of NAFTA. Everything's on the sidelines. Volatility is a little bit elevated just due to that. Uh, in the soybean market, the one thing that really sparks my interest is the, the tax coming out of Argentina, about 28%. That's affecting a lot of different things. It's affecting planting decisions by the farmers. It's affecting yields going across the board. So we're going to see how this is really going to play out. Uh, the inspections were about 98% versus 97.7%, so just a little above the average. Uh, the heavy rains coming in are going to play a, a factor. Um, it's kind of a bear storm right now for the soybean market. Uh, some analysts, some traders are out there already talking about the seven handle. So we need to hold that 825 as that support. If we break that 825, you're going to see increased short selling. You're going to in see increased volume to the downside. And you mentioned the uh, soybean rating, and we have the I-80 corridor for soybean uh, ratings that we track. And between Nebraska and Ohio on that uh, corridor there, the uh, ratings stayed either unchanged or picked up a point or two across the entire corridor. In fact, in the heart of it, uh, uh, Iowa was up two points, Indiana up two points, Illinois was up one point there uh, from what we had a week ago. This is on the soybean ratings. Uh, so that just indicates that uh, we are looking at a really big crop coming up here. Right, exactly. And that's it's typically this time of year between September, October, you see a little bit of flush in the markets and just the grains across the board. But now you throw in all the Chinese tariffs, uh, NAFTA talks. It's pretty much a bearish storm right now. If, like I said, if we can't hold that 825, you're going to see a very big spike in volume to the downside, big spike in volatility. What's it going to take to put a foundation under the wheat market here? Well, the wheat market, it, it's very odd. It's a very do odd dynamic. The U.S. dollar right now is putting pressure on exports. Um, the Russian rumors back and forth, are they going to have export tax? Are they not going to have export tax? That's creating a lot of volatility in the wheat market just across the board. So you're starting to see the hedge programs coming into in the wheat market. So what we're going to see how that really plays out. If nothing changes, uh, we could see a big spike in wheat prices. Uh, the analysts, again, are in wheat in particular, just because of the drought across the board worldwide in the summer. We could see an eight handle in, in a wheat market in the next few months. Not anytime soon, but we're going to see how this is really going to play out. Very interesting. All right, Scott, we're going to pause for a quick little break, and we'll be back with a whole bunch more market info. We're talking with Scott Geekus, and we'll return right after this. Let's run through all our futures for you. We'll start and uh, get you updated on the grain futures. We'll take a look at some contracts and go right into livestock. On the corn right now, we have December down a penny and a quarter at 367, kind of holding where it opened. On the soybean trade, we have the November contract currently trading four and a quarter lower at 840 per bushel, about a penny from its low of the day. Now let's look at uh, wheat in Chicago wheat on December. We're trading three and a half lower at 528. Wanted to point out a big move in the cotton today, too. Uh, 
cotton on December is now trading 96 points lower at 81.82 cents per pound, well off its earlier high by about 110 or 20 points. Now let's take a look at the live cattle market. Uh, currently, we have the live cattle October contract 92 lower at 108.95, while December down 55 at 113.85. And in the feeder cattle trade, right now you have your September contract down 20, October down 48 cents at 151.35. And on the lean hog trade, we now have the October contract four cents higher at 51.12, but everything from December on out is a little weaker. We have December 20 lower at 55.05. It had sold off there for a while, got as low as 54.50, and has come back now over half a dollar. So uh, kind of uh, treading water here to it an ex to an extent. Uh, April lean hogs down 45. Scott, your thought on this uh, livestock trade that we are seeing right now? What's going to be the overarching factor here to move it one way or the other? Yeah, everything right now is focused on China right now with the disease that's coming out of China. They don't really import too much beef. Uh, the beef prices will follow the pork prices after that. Uh, supply concerns with the beef. Uh, the fourth quarter production is expected to be a little bit more, a little bit higher than normal. And now, the, also in the first quarter of next year, they're expected to have production drop by about 550 million pounds. That's significant. That's going to be the second highest on record. Now, it's interesting that we have multiple cases here in China. And we had, uh, I believe, several outbreaks in Romania, I believe, uh, last week. What if it starts spreading around and, and uh, showing up in different parts of the world? What would that do to that lean hog market, do you think? Yeah, the lean hog market is going to spike. Everything's right now is focused on that. You have the ninth case already. WH Group, they shut down a slaughter plant in, in China already. So that's going to have a huge effect. If they have anything that comes out of NAFTA that's positive, or if China releases the tariffs on pork, you're going to see limit up for a couple days straight. And on the cattle side, a lot of analysts have been pointing out that uh, the fourth quarter, usually you start seeing a pickup in at least foreign demand for the beef. Yeah, and we're going to see how that plays. Like I said, you know, that, that drop off of production, about 550 million pounds, that's significant. The second on, on record, when you start hearing record numbers, I mean, that, those are significant plays. All right. Well, Scott, you made some uh, terrific points, and uh, thanks for visiting with our audience today. I appreciate the update there, and we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, Scott Geekus, he's with Longleaf Trading. He's based right there in Chicago. Always great information, Janet. I uh, love talking with Scott about the markets. Always great insight to have from both of you guys.